Hello and welcome back to Educator.com and to Biochemistry. So we've been talking about lipids for the past couple of lessons and today what we're going to do is close out our discussion of lipids by talking about what I call the biologically active lipids. Uh, that's not to imply that the other lipids are not biologically active. Um, but what I mean by that is that these lipids that we're going to talk about today, they are not used as fuel storage, you know, in the fat cells or sequestered in membranes. So in some sense, they're sort of locked in, not really moving around much. By biologically active, I mean something that's actually free to move around and engage in some sort of chemistry. So that's all I meant by that. I didn't mean to imply that they, others were not biologically active. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So let's see. Um, let's go ahead and start by discussing a molecule called phosphatidyl inositol. So let me go ahead and draw a structure here. Uh, let me see, where should I draw it? And let me go ahead and use blue. I always like blue. So let's do, now yeah, let's go this way. Yeah, let's go a little bit further over here. So C, C, C. Let's go, uh, we have our uh, C, H3, 10, C, H3. And then we have our O, and then we have our other carbonyl here. And then we have a CH2, 7. Then we have another C. We have a double bond here. And then we have a CH2. It looks like we have another 7 and CH3. So this is our diacylglycerol part. So again, we're just attaching something to glycerol. And of course, well, not of course, in this particular case, we are going to have a, uh, a glycerophosphate. So glycerol, we're going to have the phosphate linkage. So we'll go ahead and put that in. And we have our oxygen. So this is a phosphate ester. And we're, let's go ahead and draw in our, what looks like a sugar unit. So this is going to be the, well, I'll go ahead and draw things in and then I'll go ahead and label. So that's that. That's that, that's that, and that's that. And I'll go ahead and label these. This is one, two, three, four, five, and six. In this particular case, this is the numbering on the on this particular uh, section. So this is uh, phosphatidyl inositol. So or phosphatidyl, however you want to pronounce it inositol, and it is a, a glycerophosphate or a phosphoglycer, uh, whatever, it's, you know, glycerin backbone. It, it contains a phosphate. That's what's important. All these names make me crazy. They always have. I mean, they're kind of cool in the beginning, but eventually they start to wear on you. So a glycerophosphate. Let's just go ahead and call it that. Okay, so something really, really interesting happens here. Now, when this molecule, so when this molecule is activated, so this is an example of its biological activity, is activated by an extracellular stimulus, so something outside the cell binds and activates it, gets this process going. Stimulus, so extracellular, the following reactions take place. The following, oh, I'll just go ahead and write reactions, not a problem. Uh, the following reaction sequence, how's that? Okay, so the following reaction sequence takes place. Okay. Um, let me go ahead. I wonder if I should start on this page or actually go to the next page. Um, you know what? Let me just go ahead and start on this page. That's not a problem. So let me go back to blue. So I'm just going to write phosphatidyl um, inositol. Okay, so this is that. So this is in the membrane. This is a glycerophosphate. So this is one of the um, lipids that happens to be in the membrane. Now, I'll go ahead and draw a little arrow here like this. Now, and I'll go ahead and do my 
little biochemical arrows showing things coming in and things leaving. ADP. This phosphatidyl inositol is actually going to be phosphorylated. Two uh, phosphate groups are going to be attached to it. So we have two ATPs, and one phosphate from there is going to attach to this. Another phosphate is going to attach. And so let me just go ahead and write that. So phosphorylation. Phosphorylation while in the inner leaflet. So in this particular case, it takes place on the inner leaflet of the membrane. And what I mean by that is you have, of course, the outer leaflet, and this is outside the cell. And then, of course, you have the inner leaflet. This is inside the cell. And of course, you have your So inner leaflet, it's the one that's facing inside the cell. So phosphorylation, while on the inner leaflet of the cell membrane. So what happens is this thing ends up getting phosphorylated. And what you end up with is the following molecule. You end up with phosphatidyl inositol 4, 5 biphosphate. So that's it. We take a couple of the phosphate groups from ATP, we spit out ADP, we take those phosphate groups, and we're going to attach them to the 4 and 5, here and here. So that's it. So I won't redraw the structure, but it's phosphatidyl inositol 4,5 by phosphate. We're going to call that PIP2 in just a minute. OK, so now let me go ahead and go to the next page and rewrite this so we can continue on with this reaction sequence. So phosphatidyl inositol 4,5 biphosphate, which we will call PIP2. Something happens It's very, very interesting. So I'm going to draw it this way. I'm going to go, uh, actually, make a little more room because I want to write right above the line. That's one thing. And then go ahead and do that. So here, I'll do this in, do this one in red. An enzyme, oops, an enzyme called phospholipase, uh, phospholipase C actually, in the membrane, that's actually in the membrane, hydrolyzes. Lyses the glycerol phosphate bond. Phosphate bond. So let me just um, draw it out real quickly on the side here. So you had your, just real tiny, so you had this, right? And then you had your phosphate bond that goes on. So it's going to, it's going to break that bond, the glycerol phosphate bond. Okay. Uh, actually, it's going to, well, actually, that's not true. It's going to end up breaking this one. It's going to end up breaking this one. So water is going to hydrolyze it. So water is going to come and attach to that. So phospholipase C is the membrane. It hydrolyzes the glycerol phosphate bond. So it's actually water that is coming in. And it separates this into two separate molecules. The first molecule that it separates it into is IP3. And this is called inositol triphosphate. Inositol triphosphate. So it is just the, the six-membered ring plus the phosphate and the two other phosphates that are attached to it. So inositol triphosphate. Okay, so this IP3 is released into the cytosol. Remember we said it's on the inner leaflet, so once it breaks that the IP3 molecule just floats into the cytosol. I'll show you a picture of it in just a minute, so don't worry about that. Is released into the cytosol. Okay, and the other, of course, is the diacylglycerol. The diacylglycerol that it stays in the membrane. It stays. It, well, I don't need to put parentheses around it, that's fine. So the diacylglycerol part 
it stays in the inner leaflet of the membrane. Stays in the membrane. Okay. Now, here's what happens. This IP3 that's now in the cytosol, it causes the release of calcium ion from the endoplasmic reticulum from the ER. I'll just put ER for endoplasmic reticulum. Now, the calcium ion and the diacylglycerol that's still attached to the membrane, they activate together the calcium and the diacylglycerol. They activate an enzyme. They activate, well, we'll just give the name here, protein kinase C. And we just call that PKC, very, very important enzyme. So PKC, protein kinase C, it begins its function <clears throat> of regulating further enzymes by phosphorylation. So let's just recap, and then we'll go ahead and take a picture of it. So you have this uh, phosphatidyl inositol, uh, an extra uh, cellular stimulus, um, uh, ends up uh, causing it to be phosphorylated. It ends up breaking it up. It, so, it, well, actually, it, it phosphorylates it. And so what you end up with is this phosphorylase uh, phosphatidyl inositol 4,5 biphosphate, the PIP2. Uh, phospholipase C in the membrane, it hydrolyzes the glycerol phosphate bond. It breaks it up into two separate things. The IP3 is released into the cytosol. The diacylglycerol stays in the membrane. The IP3 causes the release of calcium from the endoplasmic reticulum. The calcium and the diacylglycerol activate protein kinase C. And protein kinase C starts its function of regulating further enzymes to do whatever it is that they're going to do. So this signal pathway that's taking place uh, from this uh, phosphatidyl inositol. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, schematically or diagrammatically here. <clears throat> 